So I'm a researcher in Afro-Asian studies. Uh, my, primarily, my work is in African-American literature and black studies theorizations, but I do a lot of work in the kind of Asian-American social situation in relation to black political and thought traditions. And so I think about what it means for Asian-Americans to be uh, aligned with African-American cultural experience and political strivings. And I also think about what it means for Asian-Americans to have created our own culture and our own traditions based on and riffing off of some of our appreciation of black culture. And so what it means to do that work here in South Carolina, uh, where the Asian-American population is fast growing, and also where it's a kind of foundational place for uh, historical black experience is a, it's a kind of glove fit for the the kinds of questions I want to ask and the kinds of um, the work I want to do. Well, I grew up in North Carolina, so that's, that was a big part of my moving back here after my stay in California. And so uh, my family is spread out now throughout North Carolina, but I grew up in the Triangle area. So this job has allowed me to um, be closer to them. That, that's been very good. And the Asian American presence in North Carolina has also been uh, experiencing a lot of growth and so it's been good to kind of see that and witness that. When I was a kid growing up in the 90s as an immigrant kid in Chapel Hill, we didn't have Korean restaurants, we didn't have hot pot, uh, we didn't have uh, norebang or, or uh, karaoke rooms. And so kind of to see that uh, newer waves of immigration come in and change the kind of uh, consumption opportunities, gathering spaces uh, for Asian Americans. That's been a real highlight of my time uh, living, uh, coming back to the Carolinas and, and spending time here in the last five years. We always had a small community of Korean immigrants who, who were around the same generation, but I think if you asked us uh, in my generation and a little bit younger, always trickling down to y'all's generation, we would say that we didn't always feel surrounded. And I think that's a very common experience for Asian Americans, especially in the U.S. South. But looking back on it, I can't think of a time when I couldn't practice my Korean if I wanted to, and I couldn't kind of learn more about my cultural traditions if I wanted to. So I feel really lucky and fortunate to have uh, been around as many Korean Americans and Asian Americans as I, as I have been. It feels really good. I would say it's been a paradoxical time for our, our community. We've lived uh, in my time in South Carolina in the past five years, we've lived through this kind of cultural renaissance of our uh, unprecedented levels of cultural political representation on the one hand, and at the same time with the pandemic and all the xenophobic violence and hatred that has been going on, we've also lived through a different kind of um, attention and so it's been a weird, again, paradoxical tension to uh, think about the Asian American racial experience and position uh, in this national era. It's been interesting to do it here because, again, our population is growing quickly. Uh, we have forms of Asian American experience that are as wide as anywhere else in the country. And we also have, especially in the university space, growing numbers of both Asian American students and also international students from Asia. So there's a lot of uh, kind of cultural flux in terms of thinking about um, the, what it means to define yourself as Asian American, uh, whether that identity uh, means something to the younger generation, what it has meant to the older generation. And also there are, you know, the longer I've lived here, I've run into Asian Americans who have been here for generations. And so if you go out to Decker Boulevard, uh, the International Corridor or other pockets of, of this town, you run into folks uh, who have uh, been part of the kind of original immigration stories from the advent of the post uh, of the 1965 Im Immigration and Nationality Act. And then there's Asian Americans who have been here even prior to that. And so it's actually a very interesting place to think about Asian American experience, in part because we are still very much outside of the kind of conventional wisdom and, and cultural political thinking that exists very much alongside a kind of white-black binary. And yet, 
there have always been Asians um, in the U.S. South and particularly in this state and in this capital city. Um, and so it feels good to be part of that. It feels good to, you know, lend my voice to, uh, to that level of representation and to be able to talk about it and, and lend my um, professional expertise to it as much as I can. The geriatric millennials were the ones who kind of came into the American cultural landscape not expecting Asian representation. And at this point, we're the ones who have kind of pioneered a lot of the um, major successes of cultural representation. So you could think about Simu, you could think about Aquafina, um, Anderson Pack. There's all these figures that are part of Jeremy Lin. There's all these figures who are Eddie Huang. I could just go on and on. And so th there's, there's the fact that Asian Americans got these kinds of um, voices in the cultural landscape uh, was because of a kind of common racial experience that we had where we felt like we weren't going to see it, we, we weren't going to see ourselves on screen necessarily, and yet we wanted to be able to think about what it would mean to forge that kind of representation over time. And so one thing about being part of that generation is that it's been really cool to feel like we've had a way to contribute to the larger kind of national discourses about racial representation, anti-racism, anti-sexism um, from an Asian American position.